Commissioners, can you hear me? Just, yeah. just nod your head, okay. Welcome to the Tuesday, September 21st, 2021 regular meeting of the Glen County Islands Planning Commission. This meeting is being held via video teleconference. The public has simultaneous access to the meeting. The meeting will be streamlined for public viewing through the Glen County Board of Commissioners Facebook and YouTube pages. Commissioners, remember to mute your microphone when you're not speaking. Staff will control the PowerPoint presentation. Please do not scroll or control the slides on the screen during the presentation. At this time, I'll, have, I'll call the roll. When I call your name, if you will uh, confirm that you are here, and we'll go down the rows. Commissioner Brock? Here. Commissioner DiPolito? Here. Commissioner Duncan? Commissioner Duncan? Commissioner Duncan has not joined the call yet. Okay. Commissioner Torres? I saw him run out the room. Commissioner Usry? Here. Commissioner Here. 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 Oh. Commissioner Rooks? Here. Uh, is Commissioner Torres back yet? Yes. You're here. Has Commissioner Duncan joined us? No, sir, I've not seen him join yet. All right, in the other room is Commissioner Kat Findig. Thank you, I'm here. Secretary Janet Levin. Here. Staff Stephanie Leaf. Here. Staff Will Worley. I'm here. Also present, agents for application ZM4790, Zach Harris, and Joey Strength. I think they raised their hands, so that's fine. Thank you. The meeting procedures are the planning staff presents the application request to the planning commission during the staff report. This report evaluates how the proposal conforms to Glen County Zone Ordinance and other applicable regulations in conformance with the comprehensive plan when applied to zoning matters and ordinances. Applicants shall have the opportunity to present their request to the Planning Commission. It is the responsibility of the applicant to make presentations on requests and to address any conditions or factual findings which, which they do not agree. Public hearings. Public hearings, public comments on public hearing items will be limited to 30 minutes for each opposing side with a maximum of five minutes allocated to each speaker. Comments will be limited to relevant information regarding your position and should avoid being repetitious. If your group has a spokesperson, please allow that individual to present your group's position in time allotted. The applicant may then provide a rebuttal to any testimony. The chairman may terminate testimony if it becomes repetitive. The chairman will terminate a speaker's time if the speaker begins personal attacks. Your cooperation in this process will be greatly appreciated. The first item on the business on our agenda tonight is to approve the minutes of the joint special call meeting held August 10th, 21, 2021, and approve the minutes of the Islands Planning Commission regular meeting held on August 17th, 2021, subject to any necessary corrections. Is there a motion yes, to approve? Chairman. Yes. Odessa Rook. I move that the minutes be approved from the Tuesday, August 10th, 2021. I second. All right, there's a second. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion, I'll call your name. Commissioner Brock. Approved. I second. Commissioner DiPolito? Approved. Commissioner Rooks? Approved. Commissioner Duncan, is he on yet? No. Commissioner Rooks? Torres. Torres? Approved. Mr. Usry? Approved. Commissioner Willis? Approved. Did you do both of those? Did you do both? No, I only did for All right, we need a motion for August 17th, 2021. Somebody make that motion, please. So moved, Mr. Chair. All right, Commissioner Usry made the motion. Is there a second? Second. Rooks, Commissioner Rooks seconded. All right, Commissioner Brock. 
I was not in attendance at that meeting, right. so I'm not sure if I can. You abstain. You abstain. I'll abstain. Commissioner DiPolito. Approved. Commissioner Duncan. Not here yet. Commissioner Rooks. Present. Mr. Torres. Approved. Mr. Usry. Approved. Mr. Willis. Approved. All right. You've got those votes now. Okay. All right, thank you. This is not real easy to go through this, but we're going to do the best we can. First item on the agenda tonight is ZM. Second item is ZM4790, St. Simons North End Plan Development District Amendment Community River Access. Request for an amendment to the St. Simons North End Plan Development District ZM1222 for approximately 3.42 acres within Frederica Township to allow community river access in a community dock on two lots located at 356 Pikes Bluff Drive, parcel number 04-13463, and 348 Pikes Bluff Drive, parcel number 04-13464, St. Simons Island. Joy Strength and Zach Harris, Hunter McLean agents for SS-FR, LLC owner and applicant. Ms. Leaf, you'll present this. Good evening, commissioners. This is Stephanie Leaf, planning manager. This is ZM4690, St. Simon's North End uh, plan development, and they are requesting a community river access as an allowed use uh, within this PD along the Frederica River. So this, um, this project includes uh, two different lots, and this is off of Pikes Bluff Drive on the northern end of Frederica Township. So these are the two lots, and this is the Frederica River here. And this is just an aerial view to show uh, where these lit lots sit at the curve of the river. Uh, there's an existing individual uh, private dock that does extend off of one of the lots that you can see here. So it's approximately 3.41 acres total um, that they are requesting um, that are currently plotted as two separate lots. Uh, the text amendment they're requesting does only apply to these two lots. This does not apply to the rest of Frederica Township. It's only these two lots. Uh, they are asking to have a community uh, dock and community river access as an allowed community recreation use. Uh, they are including language in their proposed text um, that would uh, basically connect this to the Georgia Department of Natural Resources um, requirements. And um, currently, the Georgia Department of Natural Resources defines a community dock, um, and this is it differentiates between uh, individual docks and, mar and marinas and several different uses. But a community dock specifically is defined by DNR as a dock that's 500 linear feet or less of docking space, which is a subdivision or community recreational amenity providing water access for residents and which may or may not entail a fee. Uh, currently, the St. Simons North End Plan Development text um, does allow a community dock on Jones Creek, and this was um, in the area where Cannons Point is located, and um, this was in the PD from, um, you know, many years back when the PD was first um, originated, when Cannons Point was um, basically planned out as a, as a residential community. And so, of course, as we know, St. Simons Land Trust has acquired the property since then, and it is now preserved. Um, so, um, and so currently that that's really the only spot where a community dock would be allowed is along Jones Creek, which is mostly along Cannons Point within the PD. So this would allow it on the Frederick River. Uh, the comprehensive plan does show this is low density residential and a community neighborhood you know, amenity is, is considered in keeping with that. And this is uh, just part of their zoning exhibit. This is the plat for Frederica Township. So lots, these are the two lots, lots 202 and 203 right here. So this is the master plan for St. Simon's North End. Uh, their master plan um, is not proposing to be amended because the plan itself will stay the same. Um, this area is considered track three of Pikes Bluff uh, and they do allow community recreation as you can see in this top left hand box. Um, so the North End PD is separated into these um, kind of different tracks. 
So really the, the language in the PD text would be amended, but the master plan itself stays the same. So under track three of Pikes Bluff, um, these are, are some of the land uses that were um, anticipated for this area. So as you can see, it's a wide variety of uses, um, recreational and residential, um, single family and multi uh, family. And then in the permitted uses with, within the current plan development text, um, I just wanted to highlight where it currently talks about the community dock on Jones Creek. So uh, community river access is allowed, but it's limited to Jones Creek. And this is where the language would, would change to also allow it on uh, Frederica and um, refer to the DNR restrictions for a community dock. And just additional permitted uses that are allowed. And this is the proposed language. Uh, we did receive uh, two written public comments um, from Mr. Walter Mueller as well as uh, Mr. Hawk, uh, that both of them do have property within Frederica Township. Um, primarily their concern is um, how this would affect the township. Uh, they do have concerns and uh, we're hoping for additional time for the HOA to discuss the project and the proposal. Um, and these comments were also forwarded to the Planning Commission. And these are your uh, possible actions. So I'm happy to answer any questions. And both uh, Jerry Strength and Zach Harris from Hunter McLean are here representing the applicant tonight. Okay. All right, commissioners, do you have any questions of uh, staff on this item? Um, I have. Raise, raise your hand if you're online. And, uh, I, have, I, have, I have a question. Uh, there is a limit on the uh, length of the uh, the length of the dock on the waterway is there not uh, five, 500 feet i think i read is that correct that is correct that is the the current restriction with dnr and and, and i guess i guess the other question just uh, just in general is the uh, is the extent of the dock confined to the extension of the side property lines of the two lots in other words they, they won't be allowed to extend the dock in front of the adjacent lots, would they? Just a question, and, and, and that may be something for the applicant to answer. It's just a, a, a notice with 500 feet with the possibility of going past past the extension of their property lines on either side. It could extend in front of the adjacent lots. It's just a just a question. Maybe the applicant has an answer. Yeah, that is a question, and yeah, an applicant may have um, more information on that, and that that would all be part of that the DNR approval. So that would not come back to us in terms of the actual um, you know dock construction, uh, but the applicant may have um, some answers to that. All right, are there any other questions from staff or staff? Well, yeah. I, okay. okay, in one area, I noticed it said. Oh, that's the roots. In one area, I know um, it states that it would be for neighborhood use. Then another area, I know it says for um, community um, use, but then it's limited to a particular area. I think it said, um, what was it? Um, I want to say, was it township? Yes, then it would be limited uh, within Frederick Township. So is it, okay, I guess I need you to define what you mean about neighborhood use, community use, but yet limited to Frederick Township area. Sure. Um, yeah, the ap applicants um, agents had stated that this um, this stock would primarily serve um, residents of the Frederick Estates, which you may recall a few months ago um, they there they rezoned to allow family estates um, in Frederick Township. This is the long that long stretch along Frederica um, 
uh, Frederica Road. And so you, those properties do not have um, any waterfront properties and they don't have water access. So that that is the intent is for this community dock to serve the, the residents of the Frederica state lots. Um, however, um, yeah, I, I'm not privy to to what details may be worked out um, or available to you know other residents of the area. So that would be something that you know would be a private matter they would work out. Um, but I think that's a good question. I mean, I think that the scale of a community dock is really um, intended to be a, a neighborhood amenity, um, and and it differentiates from a commercial marina, which is considered to be a very separate use and is treated very separately from by DNR. And if it's a commercial marina, you know that would be a uh, definitely a different conversation about <clears throat> um, traffic and and who would be you know coming to that marina to use it. Um, but I know that applicants can can add to that in terms of what their you know full plans are for this area. Okay. I think Commissioner Brockhead may have a question. Uh, yes. Um, so mine is along the same lines, but I was just curious if uh, this is for the state residents only or if it's is for the rest of the Frederica Township. So that would be a question for, I guess, for the applicants. All right, we'll have the applicant answer that. Any other questions of staff at this time? Uh, let me ask, is Commissioner Duncan on line? If you'll let us know. Yeah. Um Chair Willis, Ms. Uh, Commissioner Duncan has been trying to um, join the call and he says he's tried uh, several times and having some technical issues. All right. Well, hopefully he can get those worked out. So, all right, there's no other questions. We'll ask uh, Mr. Harris and Mr. Strength if you'll come to the microphone and identify yourself and uh, make your presentation this time. Thank you, Chairman Willis. Can everybody hear me okay? Yep. All right, my name is Zach Harris. I'm an attorney with Hunter McLean. Uh, with me this evening uh, is my uh, colleague, Joey Strength, uh, also an agent on this project, and uh, Michael Collins uh, representing uh, the applicant, SSIFR. Um, thank you all for letting us come for you tonight, and I appreciate staff's comments and the questions of uh, the planning commissioners. Uh, just briefly, uh, we're just asking for your consideration of a very minor zoning change to essentially relocate uh, an existing permitted use, a community dock from uh, one part of the district to the other part of the district. Uh, as staff pointed out, the um, Jones Creek, uh, the portion of the district that abuts Jones Creek where the community dock concept was originally contemplated is preserved in perpetuity. Uh, and so we are seeking to uh, relocate that use, although this amendment would not affect any other property other than the amendment property, uh, which is two lots, lots 203 and 202, uh, to allow an already permitted use to be utilized uh, in a different location on the Frederica River. Uh, to the specific questions uh, uh, the commissioners raised, the property lines uh, questioned by Mr. Usry, uh, the uh, sort of the concept of the dock uh, that the applicant is contemplating presently is, as staff pointed out, there's an existing private recreational dock on lot 203. Um, the concept is generally to extend what's already out there uh, to allow it to be used and permitted as a community dock, which is a fine term under, uh, under the DNR regulations. Uh, and, and so that would extend uh, up the Frederica River uh, to the permitted length. Uh, currently, the concept is a, a minimal extension of you know, between 150 to 200 feet, depending on need and feedback from DNR staff. Um, it's not a it's not a large project by any means, um, and, and so it, it would extend. Um, I guess what you would consider to be a sort of an extension of property lines over Lot 202, which is also owned by the applicant and a part of this application. Um, to uh, Commissioner Rook's question on community versus neighborhood use. Um, uh, the applicant, uh, SSIFR, has been in constant contact with the Community Association at Frederica Township 
uh, with the developers out there, Frederica Development Group, uh, and and in coordination with them, has advised property owners out there in an email earlier this month uh, what their proposal is, what the development concept is generally for uh, the Frederica Estates property. So uh, initially, the proposed use is is for this to be a private recreational amenity for a private residential neighborhood of the Frederica Estates and uh, the stakeholders out there, F, uh, Frederica Development Group and the uh, Community Association are have committed to identify uh, the feasibility of adding additional users to that within the Frederica Township uh, greater development, but at least initially, uh, while they sort out um, what the use patterns are and what the demand will be on their contemplated development out here, the initial use is proposed only for, or at least primarily for Frederica Estates. Um, so uh, as to the community doc, that's a defined term under state reg regulations uh, promulgated by DNR. That's why that that, that term has um, significance under the law as to what can be put out there, community doc versus a marina, for example, uh, which the applicant is not seeking as part of any of this. Um, so a community doc would be something that DNR uh, uh, would have to approve uh, through the shore protect or through the coastal marshlands protection committee. Um, as to uh, Commissioner uh, Brock's question on estates versus township, uh, again, uh, at least initially, the primary users will be the Frederica Estates uh, property owners, and then they'd revisit that later. Uh, so again, uh, just to uh, conclude, and I, obviously, if there are any other follow-up questions, we're, we're glad to speak to that. Um, but we are seeking. Essentially seeking a, a very minor uh, relocation of a already permitted use in the district uh, so that uh, you, we can have community river access to Frederica River. Okay. Yeah, commissioners, do you have any questions of Mr. Harris? I do, I do Chairman. Um, Mr. Oh, Harris. Uh, go ahead. Michael Torres. Um, I noticed in the, the plan development text, it stated there would be a maximum of 50 slips, um, but that a community dock is 500 feet of docking space maximum. Um, I, I don't understand how that works. It's only 10 foot per slip. Um, the, the 50 slip language uh, is existing language under the text. Uh, the community dock would would be a structure that's permitted by DNR. Um, the the zoning. Um, so as, as I'm sure you are familiar, uh, zoning is a required check, uh, um, a required component of any um, uh, marsh uh, application where you're seeking to permit a community dock. You have to make sure that what you're trying to do is permitted in the zoning district where you're trying to do it. So. Uh, this is a required component in order to uh, get any structure out there permitted. So, uh, again, this is a this is a low intensity uh, private amenity for a very low intensity residential development out there. Um, so, I don't know that um, uh, there's any intention of having any specific allocation of of slips uh, or any sort of dedicated um, uh, use out there. But uh, to the extent you know, that language is a concern. Uh, it is existing language, uh, and we're simply seeking to relocate the use uh, for a community dock to these lots. Is it going to be a, a 500 foot face dock, do you know, or is it going to be, is it going to project out into the river further than it does now? Uh, it will have a very minimal uh, uh, projection into the river. Uh, the concept is to take the existing dock structure that's out there. Uh, extend the floating dock uh, up river uh, and and obviously any sort of impacts into uh, in, into the river are, are going to be looked at by department staff uh, when that permitting time comes. Okay, thank you. All right, Commissioner Russell. Uh, yes, I have a, I have a couple of questions. One, uh, has, has there been any direct communications with the Homeowners Association about this? This proposed change? There have been, yes. Uh, uh, the applicant has been in uh, almost constant contact, certainly 
uh, weekly or every other day seems like uh, with Frederica Development Group and the Frederica Township Community Association uh, Board. Uh, earlier uh, this month, I think September 8th, uh, the Community Association uh, uh, in coordination with the applicant did send out an information update to uh, the members of the Frederica Township Community Association, generally advising them and updating them on uh, what the development uh, plans are, generally speaking, out there for the Frederica State's development and for this uh, dock amenity and rezoning. So they uh, owners out there, to the extent they've checked their email, uh, have gotten information from their community association out there. Uh, and again, just reiterate, um, this is a, uh, you know, the applicant has has been very open with the stakeholders out there with the community association as to what their uh, plan for uh, this property and this rezoning project is. Uh, we've received their input uh, and and the owners out there again have have gotten an informational update earlier this month. Um, I did notice where there were the, the, the two public comments that were sent in to uh, the county staff. Um, you know this the, the question before you is whether uh, essentially this is a reasonable rezoning request. Uh, we would we would certainly ask that you conclude that it is and, and that you support it. OK, I have I have I have one more question and uh, what's what's the difference between a community dock and a marina? Uh, well, uh, a community dock, as we are seeking to have it permitted, is not going to have uh, refueling capability, it's not going to have sanitary pump out facilities, it's not going to have boat storage. Uh, a marina uh, would have any any number of those things. Um, we are, this is, uh, this is a very low intensity um, use and it, it is, it exceeds the exemption under the Marsh Act for a private recreational dock for a an individual residential lot so it is a it is a structure that must receive a permit uh, under the Marsh Act, and so this is the from a zoning standpoint, this is the category that it falls under. It's not a it's not a simple fishing or a crabbing dock, so it would need to be um, you would have to get a marsh permit for a community dock uh, in this case, and the zoning needs to support that that is a permitted use uh, on the property in the district where we're seeking to have it permitted. Uh, one uh, one more question, one follow up to that is, uh, would uh, there be any permanent dockage there? I mean, could I lease a space and keep my boat there uh, just as long as I maintain the lease? I don't think it's um, a, a leased concept uh, is being entertained at this point. Uh, again, this is intended to be uh, initially a uh, uh, owned by the applicant and then uh, eventually transferred to a homeowners association that's going to serve uh, the Frederica State's development out there. Uh, there's certainly not going to be any any overnight um, uh, residential use or, or any sort of live aboard use permitted out there. Um, would uh, the, uh, one well, one follow up to that, I guess, would there be any limitation uh, by the DNR to lease space on that dock? I mean, would the DNR come back and say? you can't really you can't really keep boats here overnight for instance i mean i would assume that you keep them overnight but for an extended period of time let's say i i don't i, I don't think off the top of my head that that would be a, a large concern of the departments as to the length that a boat would be moored there uh, provided it's not being used for a purpose that exceeds uh, the, uh, or that ventures into it being a liveaboard uh, use uh, that is also regulated by the department Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Harris, I got another question for you. Um, I, I assume this is going to be used by uh, residents as well as their guests that may arrive by water. I, I think that's a fair assumption. Yeah. Um, will, will the HOA be charging for guests by boat? I, well, I guess the owner, the property owner, and eventually the HOA, will they be charging for use of the act for use of the dock by non-residents? So there's no plan at this time to impose a, a use fee, but obviously, uh, you know, to the extent that's not going to be per prohibited, uh, 
you know, I, I can't speak exactly to what's going to happen, whether there's going to be a use fee or not. I do know under state law, uh, you know, a, a permittee of a community dock could charge a use fee. Uh, there are costs, uh, as you well know, with anything that goes out over the water, so you know, maintenance would be an issue. Um, but there is no, um, there's no put in or take out ability uh, contemplated for this this use as a community dock. Um, so there's, um, I, yeah, I guess I, to, to specifically answer your question, I don't know at this time whether there's uh, going to be a, a user fee imposed on uh, regular use or mooring at the dock or not. Okay, I'm um, sorry, another question. I'm, I know a lot about docks, so I'm sorry, I'm digging into the docks part. Um, do you know if there'll be uh, onshore power on the docks or not for the boats to plug into? Uh, I, I would think that there would be a power run to the dock. Yeah. Okay. I mean, there'll be lighting. Uh, you know, the, you know, the dock must be lit from a safety standpoint. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner. Uh, yes, okay. I noticed it stated here before when I asked the question, and you stated that residents of the Frederica Township will have um, access to it. But in reading this, it says um, that the proposed community dock would provide access to the Frederica River for owners of certain properties within the Frederica um, Township. Therefore, there is some limitation as to who will be allowed to use the dock. Yes, ma'am. There's a limitation that would be consistent with any limitation on any community dock in Glen County. Um, it is okay. not a, it's not intended to be open to the general public. Um, and uh, as, as I mentioned before, you know, the, the initial contemplated use is primarily for owners of these uh, Frederica estates who, you know, who are interested in using the dock and depending on what the usage patterns establish over time. Um, applicant is has been in communication with the uh, Frederica Township Community Association uh, and the Frederica Development Group out there as to uh, the possibility of allowing um, sort of greater use uh, among other residents out there. But initially, just to reiterate, you know, this is a private amenity being developed on the applicant's property as part of the larger development of the Frederica Estates, um, and that's the at least initially is the going to be the predominant use of the property. Okay, I was not speaking in reference to the general public. Um, I understood it, but I was just concerned when it says properties um, limited to certain property owners within the Federal River Township. So there is um, a great deal of limitation there. So it's, to me, I'm not clear as to who would be allowed even within the um, Frederick Township area? Who would be allowed to use it and who would not be? Well, well so again, the, the so the question before you all is, is 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 whether the proposed use of a community dock as a as a permitted use is a reasonable uh, request before the panel uh, for the property that this rezoning request affects. Uh, I, the applicant has not made a firm dis determination as to who, who can and cannot use the property within the context, of course, of what I've said earlier, that uh, this is intended to be a, a, an amenity of a residential development, uh, the Frederick Estates, uh, which is um, uh, you know, within the general Frederick Township area, uh, but is contemplated as being uh, a separate development uh, within that area. So it's initially, uh, they are certainly open to working with the community association uh, uh, to the extent it's feasible. And, and I, would, I would point out that you know, there are a lot of lots in Frederica Township. And if anyone, uh, any, any owner of a, of a riverfront lot were to contemplate um, a, a dock amenity sufficient to satisfy uh, everyone out there who wanted to use the dock amenity, it would be far greater than what we were proposing 
here and the intensity of the use would likely be much greater than what applicant is proposing or willing to put out there. Uh, so so before before you is a a, a very limited minor uh, relocation of an existing use already permitted in the district to portion of property on a on a on a different water body within the district. Um, so you know just to just to reiterate, you know, the primary use here is, is intended to be for the Frederica Estates. Uh, the applicant has been uh, very open uh, with the township, uh, Frederica Township Community Association and the Frederica Development Group as to its intended use. And, and they are in constant contact. Again, uh, they all have to play uh, in the same area. So um, I hope that answers your question. Not really. <laughs> I think what it is, the Frederica State's lots of ones combined with use at this time. Is that right, Commissioner? Mm -hmm. that's, that's what I understood is, 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 the, is the new area that we recently uh, allowed change on. It's what they're contemplating currently. Um, but I guess that could change. Yeah, that's correct. Any, any other questions of the applicant? I think Commissioner Duncan, are you on? You'll let us know. Yes, I, I'm on, Commissioner. All right, thank uh, Chairman. Thank you. Hmm? Any other questions of the applicant? All right, this is a, a public hearing. And this time we'll open up a public hearing for anyone who would like to come up to speak in favor of this application. If you'll come forward and identify yourself. Uh, there's no one in the room to speak to that. All right. If there's uh, anybody who can come up and speak against the application, if you'll come forward. Is there anybody there? <laughs> uh, not for this item. All right. Okay. Thank you. The public hearing is closed this time. Commissioners, what is your will on this ZM board? Seven nine zero. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion. I recommend approval of the proposed zoning or the proposed zoning decision as presented. There is a motion. Is there a second? Second. I second. Who, who seconded first? Bryce. Bryce. Mr. Torres. Torres. There is a motion. Second. Is there any discussion? All right, I will call the roll and you will say aye or nay on this motion. Aye if you're for it. Commissioner Brock? Aye. Commissioner DiPolito? Aye. Commissioner Duncan? Aye. Mr. Rooks? Aye. Mr. Torres? Aye. Mr. Usher? Aye. Mr. Willis? Aye. Vote is unanimous. All right, thank you. All right, next item is TA 4763 Building Heights on St. Simons Island Ordinance Amendment. County initiated a request to amend the Glen County Zoning Ordinance to provide that the maximum height of any building on St. Simons Island should not exceed 35 feet to provide for exception to the height limit on certain property zone resort residential to amend the definition of building height. Please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Stephanie Lee, Planning Manager. Uh, this is the county initiated uh, text amendment to the zoning code. And you may recall a few weeks back, uh, there was a joint work session with the Board of Commissioners, and this was one of your topics. Um, this building height uh, change would only apply on St. Simons Island. Um, there is a revision to the definition of building height. Uh, that a lot of that is um, really kind of cleaning that up and clarifying it um, to make sure it conforms with our um, with FEMA regulations and our flood damage prevention ordinance. Um, also part of this um, is a restriction to building heights on St. Simons um, that throughout the island, including planned development tax, uh, building height would be limited to 35 feet. And the only exemptions would be um, along Ocean Boulevard within, uh, I'm sorry, um, 
so restriction would be 35 feet um, throughout the island. The only exception would be um, resort residential that could stay at 45 feet unless it is along Ocean Boulevard. So Ocean Boulevard uh, properties that are in resort residential would also be limited to 35 feet. Uh, there is a explanation of changes and the ordinance that was included in your packet. And um, so here, um, here is the proposed amendment that is before you tonight. Uh, there was a, a public comment that was received prior to this meeting from Mr. Preston Kirkendall. Uh, the concern there is regarding uh, forest our cultural zoning and the 45 feet. And uh, that was the only one that was received prior to this meeting. I'm sorry. Uh, no, there was a second comment from Mr. George Ragsdale. Uh, his concerns was uh, in regard to the building height definition. Um, and then also regarding non-conforming buildings, how those would be handled. Uh, so this would be a public hearing tonight and there are proposed um, actions uh, that, that are on this screen. Um, Board of Commissioners, uh, Commissioner Cap Bendig is here this evening. Um, he has been the sponsor of this amendment. So I know he wanted to uh, present and discuss uh, with the IPC. Uh, regarding this amendment. So I'm happy to answer any questions at this time um, or if we want to turn it over to Commissioner Fending. Do you have any commissioners have any questions of the staff at this time? Uh, Mr. Chair, I have I have one uh, one question about the uh, building height definition and I think it's a fairly simple question. Uh, what is my understanding of the definition? The only thing of substance that has changed is the one foot freeboard that we're currently made that that we're allowed now to measure the height from is that is that what's changed i mean is that the is that the, the crux of it yeah yes sir there, yeah there was some other um kind of clean up but yeah in terms of a substantial change yeah that includes that one foot pre freeboard that um that you're aware is is part of our flood damage prevention ordinance now so this this accounts for that and um i don't know uh our attorney, Mr. Worley, um, was there anything more on on that? Right, right, and, and as I understand it, currently, uh, currently we we are measuring building height according to this definition. As as I recall, I know there's been some uh, uh, some discussion about the uh, the freeboard elevation and how we measure. And uh, currently, I know we have allowed measurement from the freeboard um, for our building permits. And so really, this is this is really no change from what is currently been done by the building department, as I understand. That is correct. Exactly. We have been using this definition and this um, this codifies it and incorporates it into our code officially. Thank you. Uh, I got a question for Will. Um, I see that in Section B, uh, Sea Island is being removed from this definition. Um, does that mean Seattle can build whatever height they want to? They will be able to build to whatever height the a particular property is zoned at. Whatever the height limitation is in that zoning district, um, they will be able to build to that height. Okay, so I guess we're not worried about the density on Saint on Sea Island. Okay, thank you, Will. Any other questions, of staff? Okay, Commissioner Fendig, if you'd like to come up and make your presentation, please. Well, thank you, everyone. I uh, certainly appreciate you being here tonight to uh, hear this out. And uh, your your role for filtering applications, changes, variances is vitally important to the quality of St. Simons and I know how much time it takes and I want to thank you for uh, being a part of this. When I decided to run for Island Commissioner, I did so pretty quietly and began to really canvas uh, my current island population. Uh, what were their concerns for the future going forth? And, you know, we really haven't had much discussion about density. The interesting thing is, is uh, Commissioner Torres may remember, I had a great meeting with his uh, granddad uh, and Michael was present. 
uh, and we talked about roads, uh, properties, density. Um, you know, their their development on the north end is uh, a choice to reduce density that they're doing. They could have put more houses on the north end, uh, done a lot, and they plan to phase that development and and help with density going out there. And and that's kind of the concept that we now have to take island wide. The island's going to continue to grow as long as it's allowed to, whatever dimension it's allowed to. That's because it's market driven, it's development driven, and uh, we currently have no real restraint, uh, you know, for the future density of St. Simons. The, the message, as you know, is we're struggling with roads. We're, we're not going to be able to expand the capacity of roads. You know, it's going to be very difficult to do that. We can make efficiency improvements in the flow of traffic, but even then we've reached that point in our history as an island on the why of the road. Are we going to continue on uh, going uh, with uh, basically density not being addressed, struggling with traffic, um, or are we going to take this opportunity at the moment, which I'm challenging our community and you as planning commission to to consider uh, this issue of how to begin to restrain density. And, and this conceptually brings forth the best of the conversation that I've had with a lot of different people you know, people that oppose it, people that are for it, uh, but basically having the conversations and trying to format, format that into an ordinance now, because as you know, St. Simons is now experiencing what I call the gold rush again that happened in the 70s. And, um, and that is the, the demand because of COVID and short-term rentals is taking away the sanctity of neighborhoods and, and, and the goal of buyers and developers now is to uh, maximize the full use of a property to be rented out. And I know that's true and it's happening all across the island, uh, all up at the north end, uh, because every day probably nobody on this island spends more time with a visitor and locals with their families visiting than I do on my boat tours on my trolley tours in the heat of the summer, I may do four or five tours in an hour and a half. And we talk a lot. And of course, I'm telling them what they're seeing around, but I ask them questions. 95, maybe 98% of the people that were on my vehicles and boats this year told me they were in short-term rentals. And, and these were families of 12 and 15 people. Um, you know, going on. And and I know that every real estate agent knows that they'd love to have good property to sell because it'd go in a heartbeat. And the majority of those people are buying it for uh, the short-term rentals. So they're maxing whatever capacity we allow. So it's, it's a density issue. You drive these roads, all of you do every day. And, um, you know, it's the future. You, you, it's where, where are we going with our future? I've traveled extensively, had the privilege by boat. I know Mr. Torres has traveled a lot. The waterfronts of most, almost every island community from Key West to Maine. And, and I've seen what the unbridled restraint does to an island, and a waterfront community, and it's going to continue. Uh, fortunately, we do have a 45-foot height restriction in uh, the RR district. It, and one time that got exceeded to five floors and we were able to pull it back. Uh, but the bigger the box in the years going forward that is open, the more we're going to suffer as a quality uh, community. So that's the purpose of this. It's one part of a package that can impact the quality of certain areas, specifically like St. Simon's Village specifically like Ocean Boulevard, uh, where the, the the RR district will roll down there and, and what's left there 
from the elementary school going south is all going to pull out on Ocean Boulevard. Ocean Boulevard is a major thoroughfare for the island. It's not a dinky road. It connects the village to East Beach. Um, that's a particular area. And, and just the development push in a lot of areas, especially with the PD techs on the north end. Yeah, people are renting on the north end. I can tell you they are. And, and we have issues up there that allow 45 feet and there's 500 to 6,000 uh, at least specifically identified home sites that are going to be built at some point coming forth. They're probably going to be built with rentals in mind. Uh, and you're going to have, you know, if you figure the two and a half or two cars per house, you're talking about for sure 12, 13,000 cars are going to dump coming down Frederica Road uh, to the Sea Island Road intersection trying to get north and south and through the island. So this is our opportunity as a community to say, you know, good is good, but we don't want more. And and there, this is one of the packages that will help that effort. And I'm glad to open it, ask any questions. Thank you, Commissioner Fendig. Anybody have questions, uh, Commissioner Fendig? Well, thank you for allowing me to bring this forth to you uh, with the support of my commissioners, not just me, uh, and uh, bring it to you for your deliberation and modification and wisdom. It's your island. It's our future. I, I got a question for you. Um, why why uh, exclude Sea Island from this restriction? Well, I think it's pick and choose your battles. Uh, I would like to see Island do that. Uh, you know, just honestly, there's a lot of wealth. And, uh, you know, that's that's a separate island. So I wanted to start with, what do you call, the lowest hanging fruit and, and see if we can get this through and maybe that we can talk Sea Island into the future of embracing this concept. I mean, you know what it looks like up and down the East Coast, so you know the potential. Thank you. Any other questions before we open up the public hearing? <clears throat> All right, is there anybody in the room that's uh, here for the public hearing to speak in favor of this application before, besides Cap, Cap, uh, Commissioner Fendig? Seeing none, raise your Okay. <laughs> Joe, uh, state your name, please. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Joey Strength. I'm an attorney with Hunter McLean. Um, and uh, I, I know there's not a large crowd here, uh, and I wasn't sure whether to speak in favor or against the, this um, proposal, uh, because I think that um, uh, I am here on behalf of Sea Island Company uh, that has been mentioned before, and there's really a lot that Sea Island Company would support about this uh, proposal. Uh, in the sense that um, they believe that uh, things that can help prevent the over uh, development of St. Simons is appropriate, uh, that uh, reduction in density is appropriate. You may recall the last time I was before you when we had the rezoning for the uh, Frederica SSI FR property, it was really the first time in decades that a property owner had come forward, uh, if ever, and voluntarily reduced density on a parcel from over 700 units uh, to uh, a, a reduction um, into the three or 400 units. Um, and, and, and that very large reduction in density is something that helps alleviate um, traffic and other concerns for uh, St. Simons. I would say that that's the spirit in which the company is operating. Um, and so the the desire and sort of goal of this uh, ordinance is something that is to be commended. Um, we do think, however, that the uh, inclusion of the impacts on plan development texts um, should take a little more consideration. Um, and for that purpose, would ask that um, 
that like resort residential in uh, significant parts of the island that are excluded from this ordinance, that plan development text would also be excluded. Um, there are a number of plan development text on St. Simons that were, you know, a plan development text is a text that's created specifically for a parcel and that um, takes into consideration uh, the uh, uniqueness of the property, the size of the property, other uh, zoning limitations that might be included in the plan development text to, Im to, to it affect um, proper development for a parcel. Um, and, 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 um, and those texts are texts that C. Allen Company and others have uh, you know, master planned off of and with a long term view of what their future development plans might look like. Um, this change could have a material adverse impact on that. Um, and so the request would be to say that we're supportive of the general concept, uh, but um, we think further study is appropriate for how it might impact plan development text. Um, and if the plan development text could be carved out at his exemption, um, I think that's something that would be um, address some of these concerns. Thank you. Thank you. I guess that was a fuller way to some degree. <laughs> anybody else? Uh, is there anybody there who'd like to speak against this application? All right, see you none. Uh, <clears throat> we'll turn over to commissioners up. I'd like to make a comment. <clears throat> I had a conversation with Commissioner Fendig and he knows how I feel about this and I applaud him for trying to to work on this and uh, to me this is a, it's not as simple as we wanted to think it to be. I'm opposed to a blanket uh, 35 foot across the whole island. I think as uh, Mr. Strength alluded to there's some PD techs that are already in place that uh, address the height and the heights of 45 feet and uh, I uh, agree with Mr. Kirkendall on the Hampton Point that what that would do would spread out some houses and create less green space. So we're real concerned about green space, but if you reduce the height there, they're going to build a bigger house and they're going to spread it out. And they'll still get what they want uh, in terms of, of uh, what they want to build. So I respect Mr. Fendig on this, and I think there's a ways we can accomplish what he wants to do, but I personally do not think that a blanket 35 foot height across the whole island is the way to go. Mr. Chairman, uh, it's Patrick here. Could I make a comment, please? Yes, go ahead. You know, I think we could probably have a long discussion on this tonight. And and I think we do need to have further study on this. Um, we were not able to get into this discussion very much in the uh, public, <coughs> sorry, in the uh, workshop, uh, joint workshop meeting we had with the BOC and the Mainland uh, Planning Commission. So I would, I'd, I'd like to make a motion to defer this to a, um, some point into the future. Uh, would you like to make a motion to defer to have and uh, I'll ask uh, to have a day sir, but also to have a work session regarding this. Would that be part of your motion? Yes. Uh, you know, let's let's well, let's go ahead and get the motion on the table, then we can discuss about that. Go ahead, yep. and make your motion if you'll state it again. Yeah, uh, I like to make the motion to recommend or defer action on the ordinance amendment. <clears throat> to a date certain, uh, but also have a workshop prior to that. Commissioners, uh, this is uh, Will Worley. Um, you need to enumerate what date you want to defer this to. Okay. Whether it's um, the next meeting, some other date that you choose. You need to specify which date you're talking about. And commissioners, your October date would be October 19th and your November is November 16th. 
Um, Speaking of uh, the workshop front too. Yeah. That, yeah. Uh, this, this is Commissioner Brock. I, I feel like October 19th would be a little premature to, to have a, a workshop that was efficient uh, to make decisions by October 19th. Okay, so um, do, I, do I still have the floor? Uh, yes. Go ahead. So uh, I like to um, amend my motion uh, to a date certain uh, to the November meeting for deferral, but to have a workshop prior to that. It, it doesn't necessarily need to be the next scheduled IPC meeting. So, Will, help me out. Uh, how do yeah, I that's fine. That? You, don't have to, you don't have to specify the date of the work session. I'm oh. sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear any of that. Uh, I said you don't have to specify the date of the work session, just the date that you wanted to defer consideration of the item to. Okay, uh, let me restate it then. I, I'd like to uh, I, I offer a motion to defer the action of the ordinance amendment uh, to the November IPC meeting. Against the book, that's second. That's the 16th, is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, November 16th. And, Commissioner, and, Rook, Commissioner and, Rook, and, Rook, this meeting. And further, and further ask for a workshop prior or before, prior to that uh, next public hearing. Commissioner Rooks, do you agree with that? In yes. addition to that motion, that there'll be a workshop scheduled prior to that meeting. Yes. Miss right. Levin, you want to read that motion back? Yeah, that I will. <laughs> uh, Commissioner Patrick Duncan offered a motion to defer this application uh, to the November 16th uh, Planning Commission meeting and to have a workshop prior to the November IPC meeting. All right. There's a second and a motion. Is there any discussion? Uh, I have had a little bit of discussion. I, I, I think I, I think we need a little direction as to what we're expecting to accomplish between now and November. Uh, I, I, I think it's important that uh, we get a good understanding of which of exactly which properties are affected, um, not not just a general observation of well, maybe PD text. Not all PD techs would be affected. I know there there are some that would not be, uh, but it, uh, but specifically which ones are. Uh, in other words, I know for a fact that that uh, Sea Palms West, for instance, would, would not be affected. Uh, I'm not sure about Sea Palms East, but there are some that aren't affected. Um, so it, it it'd be uh, good for us to understand exactly which properties that we are talking about, and perhaps staff could could help us with that. Um, also, uh, this is this is just a housekeeping item. In uh, in this amendment, um, we're talking about changing the heights 35 feet, but uh, you've inadvertently removed the number of stories uh, that uh, would be allowed in a 45 foot uh, structure. Uh, it's, it basically says there is there is no story limitation. Currently, we have three, so that's something going forward we want to look at as well. Miss um, Leaf, could you get that information to us prior to that work session that uh, Commissioner Usher has requested? Yeah. So what I what I heard was, um, I think we can you know, do this through uh, you know a GIS map. Um, you know which which properties in terms of you know zoning districts as well as the PDs that are affected. I know we've done some of that research already, so we can provide that to you. Right, and I think I think I think what we need to understand is is, is which which gives us which which areas give us the most the most bang for our buck in terms of limiting density. In other words, uh, you know, maybe up there at Hampton, it's not so important as much as it is closer into the village. I don't know. That's 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 what we need to understand. Right. Okay. Thank you. Information prior to the workshop or prior to the November meeting? Prior to the workshop. Okay. Yeah, so we want that information readily available. Any other uh, discussion? 
All right, we have a motion and we have a second. And at this time, I'll call the roll. We'll take if you vote aye or nay against the, on the motion. Commissioner Brock. Aye. Commissioner DiPolito. Aye. Commissioner Duncan. Aye. Mr. Rooks. Aye. Mr. Torres. Aye. Mr. Ussery. Aye. Mr. Wiggles. Aye. The vote was unanimous to defer. All right. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Sure, go ahead, Commissioner. All right, I just want to thank all of you. This is the beginning of a conversation that we need to have. Some ideas have to come forth and then be dealt with and massaged and looked at. And that's uh, the challenge that I'm putting before you all because the future of our island is now in your hands to work this ordinance through to the right balance. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next item is TA 4764 Beach and Dune Protection Ordinance Amendment. The county initiated a request to amend the Glen County Zone Ordinance to amend section 727 Beach and Dune Protection to reduce the development setback line from 40 feet to 25 feet for areas with an active stable dune sequence to increase the development setback line from 20 feet to 25 feet for areas without an active stable dune sequence and to move some conditional uses to permitted uses. Ms. Lee. Thank you. This is TA 4764 Beach and Dune Protection Ordinance Amendment. Uh, this was another topic that was on your joint work session with the Board of Commissioners a few weeks back. Um, and you may recall that the background to this coming before you was um, for quite a quite a while now. We've been hearing from um, IPC members, Board of Commissioner members, as well as applicants in the community and um, those working um, as agents for the applicants. Um, that the process of the county, you know, has in its code is duplicative to what the DNR requires. Um, so because the DNR does require a zoning compliance letter from the county, um, these projects have to come through the county for conditional use permits, uh, which is, you know, a several month process before they can even make application to the DNR. So it um, extends that time period. Uh, that they do need to to spend you know working on permitting for their projects and uh, because the dnr had amended and revised their regulations uh, this past year um, our our county code actually is now more restrictive than dnr so some of these changes are to align the county code with the department of natural resources um, in terms of the setbacks uh, the other element that we're looking at um, in addition to aligning the setback requirements is uh, right now we do go before the board of commissioners for each property uh, that is that is along the shoreline to establish the development setback line and so uh, we do put this on board of commissioner agendas and um, the count the county commission does have to um, uh, take a you know consider that and take a vote to establish the development setback so that is done on every project whether they need a conditional use permit or not. Um, they have to get that before getting any kind of a building permit or any other permit you know, from our office. Um, so, so the change that is being proposed is to move that from having to be a, a county commission decision to a staff decision. So staff um, in consultation with DNR, we always require a, a, a survey as well as the DNR jurisdictional determination and uh, and so staff will use that in conjunction with DNR to look at the development setback to determine if that meets our code. So that is something we're proposing. And then um, additionally, um, some of the comments that came out of the work session were to look at some of those conditional uses and and determine whether some of those may be more maybe maybe appropriate as permitted uses. Um, you know, and so what we focused on was landscaping. So what we heard was some of the native landscaping, landscaping um, elements, hard and softscape. Some of those may be appropriate to be permitted uses instead of conditional uses. So that is what we have proposed in this uh, amendment that's before you. And here is a copy of what was provided to you in your packet. This is a proposed amendment. And the explanation of changes. Uh, we did receive a public comment from Mr. George Ragsdale. 
Um, he had some, he was uh, fine with the development setback line shifting or changing to align with the state, uh, but there were concerns about the, some of the uses that are currently conditional that would be uh, permitted uses if the change is adopted. And these are your possible actions. And I'm happy to answer questions. And uh, Mr. Worley is, is here to answer questions about this draft as well. Okay, Commissioner, any questions of staff? Okay. Yeah, I do. Um, this is Michael Torres. Um, can you tell me exactly what the Beach and Dune district is? Uh, what is it? So, so what it what it currently entails? Yeah, so we, what, where is that? What areas that cover? Is the district? Is that the entire Glen County or? Um, no. So we do have basically um, a boundary. Um, so I'm trying to. I don't know if it shows in here because this just says the development setback. Yeah, let me just pull up that information for you and I can read that off in a second. Okay. Yeah, Beach and Dune Protection District. I've, I've never, I've honestly, no one ever have seen a map of that. Uh, Commissioner Torres, the the district is uh, defined in 727.2, um, and it's the that you know there's a separate definition for area A and area B, um, depending upon whether there's a uh, established uh, active or stable dune sequence or whether there's not one. So 727.2 of the ordinance is where the the boundaries of the district are defined. Can y'all, I don't, I don't have that in front of me. Can you tell me what it is? Yeah, I'm going to pull it up and I'll try to share it on the screen. It would be helpful to know what we're considering changing. While she's uh, looking, Mr. Chairman, may I comment? Sure. Go ahead. Um, this was another uh, thing that came through the commissioners. Uh, and we sent to y'all is obviously the first thing it was the uh, Johnson Rocks, the center of the Johnson Rocks, and then on around East Beach, a lot of different applications. And then on Sea Island, uh, we had uh, properties, the setback line was 40 feet. Well, the DNR has recently changed that to 25 feet jurisdiction. So uh, the goal of the commissions in sending this forward was to align that uh, district 25 feet to match the DNR setback uh, line. Then the other discussion was, uh, well, should the county even weigh in on it, just let it go straight over to the DNR? But the feedback from citizens and neighbors and some of the commissioners was that, you know, this gives an opportunity in those unusual situations uh, of concern that uh, neighbors or the public would have uh, an opportunity to weigh in on a particular application. Uh, so that's that was the gist of why we were bringing this forward. All right, thank you. Ms. Lee, did you find it? Yes, sir. So uh, commissioners, um, do you see on the screen um, section 727 Beach and Dune Protection. Um, so section 727.2 is what the district actually is. So this is um, Commissioner Torres's question of what exactly are we we looking at? It's basically two two kind of thresholds. So first, you know, first as staff, we look to see if a property even falls within the district. And then if we check that box and say, yes, it does fall in the district, then at that point we go to kind of that second step with which Commissioner Fendick is referring to is about, okay, well now is your setback, um, you know, 40 foot as the code, code reads now, or is it the 20 foot setback? Um, and then we, we kind of go from there. So under area A, which is a shorefront area that has a active stable dune sequence extending from the mean high water mark, we look at um, an area between basically native trees that are 20 feet in height, um, that's from the so basically from the mean high water mark to a native tree that's 20 feet in height 
and that does go back to the the older DNR regulations that did look at where a native tree was, um, or a line 50 feet landward of any seawall structure. So, um, so basically, that would be from mean high water mark to 50 feet uh, landward of a seawall structure. So that's a pretty pretty big area that that most of our um, you know, shorefront covers. And then. Um, and then the second part, if you're in area B, is a shorefront area that does not have an active stable dune sequence. So these are the properties that have um, uh, you have the have the rocks and have some kind of a seawall. And then this is where we do look at the native trees um, or an inhabitable building, and then um, or a line 50 feet landward of any seawall structure. So that's basically the the gist of it as we look at mean high water mark. Um, and then we pretty much go go 50 feet landward of a seawall structure um, or to a native tree or inhabitable building. Um, so, so pretty much everything along our store our shorefront falls into the district. Um, I I know since I worked here and been working with this, I don't think there's been anything on our um, on our beachfront that has not fallen into the district. But there are some properties that. Maybe they fall in the district, but they don't meet that second threshold of really having um, a development setback that really impacts the development. In some cases, a development setback may actually be very far down the beach, you know, close to the to the where the waves are breaking, very far from maybe a property line. Oh, okay. Just for further clarification, shorefront is limited to oceanfront. Does it include, say, tidal lakes? So that that might be more of a technical question with with DNR. Um, anything that is um, marsh, though, is all under the Coastal Marshlands Protection Act, and this would not impact that. So anything that's Coastal Marshland Protection Act, and that's really um, you know kind of when we look at where does it fall in this kind of list of things we're looking at. Um, really, the very first one is we get that jurisdictional determination from DNR. And because there, there are properties that have both, um, we've seen properties that both have Shoreline Protection Act as well as Coastal Marshland Protection Act, just because of where they, you know, where they sit um, with, you know, with marsh and and ocean, you know, coming kind of in the same vicinity. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. I have I have some uh, comments, Mr. Chair. Um, I'd like to, you know, the um, most stable dune is a moving target. It, uh, we, we've seen on St. Simons in recent years that the dunes, especially along East, East Beach, have, are starting to grow. Um, I dare say in the, in the not too distant future, the, what we currently call the stable, most seaward stable dune is going to move, and it'll move seaward. Um, and uh, at, at, at that point, we, we stand to gain a lot of potentially developable land that uh, we, we currently look at as, as nothing but a dune, a dune field. Uh, my, my concern is, is this, this doesn't really help that. It, uh, in fact, just following the, uh, the DNR's recommendations or, or to coincide with their, their recommendations, I, I don't think it's necessarily wise for the island going, going forward. Um, I'm not sh so sure exactly what the answer is, but I know, I know, for instance, years ago when we were doing work in Florida, they actually had a development setback line that was a surveyed line uh, that, that, that did not move. Uh, it, it ran around the coast of Florida. I'm not sure what it is now, but, but uh, I kind of wonder if, if, if perhaps that's something we ought to look at here, so rather than having a, a line that, that is based on what the DNR has, we ought to have our own line based on what Glenn County thinks should should work for us. It may initially coincide with the DNR line today, for instance, but in in, in time in time going forward, as uh, we, we gain more accreted land, which by the way is kind of an unusual situation on barrier islands now. We're very fortunate that, in that regard. But uh, it, it may be that, that we could come up with a survey line and say this is the county's development setback line, and it may it may or may not coincide with the DNR line. That's just an idea. It's a thought. It's, uh, it's totally different from from what this uh, from what 
this says here now, uh, but it, I think it's something we ought to consider, especially in light of what's going on on East Beach now and also in front of the Coast Guard Station and all the way down to Massagill Park. One other, one, other, one other comment, just based on what's written, if we do go forward with this, I think that uh, under 727.4 permitted uses, we've, uh, we've included decks, decks as a permitted use. Um, I would uh, uh, permitted use seaward of uh, the development setback line. I would suggest we take decks out. That's a broad, that's a broad term. Decks can mean all sorts of things. Uh, I think the other items in that category, landscape walls, retaining walls, are more engineering considerations uh, than the landscape, of course, is something that would not be necessarily a, a permanent a permanent thing. But uh, I would suggest if we do go forward with this, we take decks out and make it, uh, maybe put it in conditional uses. Uh, let me ask a, uh, a question to, to Commissioner Usher. Basically, what you're saying is that the land continues to accrete there on the on the beach there uh, in the uh, Massengill Park area and the East Beach and the Coast Guard Station area and all that down toward King and Prince. Conceivably, in the future, could condominiums be built between the condos now and this new setback line? That's that's the question. I, I think I think they could, Mr. Chair. So that's something to consider. I don't know uh, how everybody thinks about that, but uh, and I'm not sure if it could happen at all with those condos that are already in place if they would allow. It, but uh, that would be a pretty ugly fight. Right. But well, there there are some privately there are a few not not very many privately owned parcels that are down uh, that are down there in that uh, resort residential district that are on the on on the beach that you could go forward of where currently the uh, development setback line is and actually put something further out on the beach that uh, I mean, what's currently would be allowed. That's if we continue to have a, we have accretion. My concern is that we should stabilize it. I, I, I think you know the DNR has had trees, and now we've got a trees was a way to determine the uh, development setback line, and now it's uh, now we've got a different way of measuring it. And I, I, I just I just wonder uh, for the benefit of, of the island if we shouldn't come up with a way to to have a, a line that we draw and say this is this is our line. This is as far as we're ever going to go. And going forward, uh, uh, we won't go beyond that line. Okay, thank you. Any other uh, comments? Go, Commissioner Torres, did you raise your hand? Uh, I'm sorry, I was pointing at uh, Brock has her hand raised. <laughs> Any other any other questions from staff? All right, this is a public hearing, so anybody who is in favor of this application, if you'll come forward and state your name and uh, make your presentation. I'm not sure if there's anybody in the room except Mr. Pendy. All right, seeing none, anybody opposed to this? All right, uh, commissioners? Someone is coming up. Is it? Is that? Okay. Good evening. Um, can y'all hear me okay? Yes. Okay, it's a little odd. <laughs> Good evening, Chairman Willis, um, Chairman Commissioner Findig, and Island Planning Commissioners. My name is Alice Kyes, and I'm the Vice President of Coastal Conservation with the organization 100 Miles. We are a coastal advocacy group based here in Glen County and um, here in Brunswick, right around the corner from, from where I am. I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you tonight regarding the changes proposed for this beach and dune uh, development setback line. Um, as y'all have just discussed, the, the definition of this district is defined by areas that are subject to storm surge, subject to um, damage from um, ocean activities, and setbacks serve a very important function in these particular areas. They act as buffers to facilitate not only water quality protection, but habitat um, protection, as well as the protection of the people and the structures that are built in that district. Um, the Beach and Dune Protection District of the <clears throat> County Code upholds the Georgia Shore Protection Act, as y'all just discussed. And it, that act was established in part 
uh, to sustain the function and the form of these setbacks in order for them to provide the reliable protections for people and wildlife. I understand, um, Commissioner Fendig, the, the need to change the setback from the landward toe of the most landward dune from 40 feet to 25 feet to match state law. But from a practical standpoint, from a public safety standpoint, and from a scientific standpoint, I cannot recommend it as being a wise decision. With sea level rise accelerating, especially in the southeastern coast of the United States, more intense hurricanes and storm surges affecting our communities, we should be increasing, not de decreasing these setbacks so they can continue to serve their function. Decreasing the setback will also allow for more structures to be built along the shorelines that have the potential. And as we've seen in previous years, they break apart and release flying material and debris into the air. And that debris also could get pushed inland when storm surges occur and wash ashore. I have a report here that I'd be happy to share that was released by a military expert panel discussing the need for more protective shoreline buffers and setbacks like the 40 foot one that y'all have in that we have in place here in Glenn County. Department of Defense installations all over the country are enhancing these precautions that are known challenges in coastal communities and we should too. My organization does not recommend reducing the setback from 40 feet to 25 feet as a matter of public safety and protection. The second point I would like to raise is related to the proposed changes to the permitted uses, which seem to be contrary to um, the commissioner's interest in consistency with state law. The proposed changes will, without doubt, cause major confusion among residents, builders, and others interested in working along the shoreline because the proposed amendment is actually contrary to the Shore Protection Act. The Shore Protection Act, Section 12.5.237, states very clearly that no person shall construct or erect a shoreline engineering activity or engage in any land alteration which alters the natural topography uh, or vegetation in an area within the jurisdiction, the state jurisdiction of 25 feet back, except in accordance with the terms and conditions of a permit issued in accordance with this part. So that basically means that the state will only allow shoreline engineering and land alteration within that 25 feet with permission from DNR or permission from the state protection, uh, the shore protection committee. The creation of docks, landscape walls, retaining walls, and landscaping using any kind of plant material is considered engineering and certainly land altering and is rightfully included in the local code as conditional use dependent on permission from the state. If the local change were to go, if the proposed local change were to go into effect, you would be send the message that engineering and land alteration of all these types is okay without a permit and may go and individuals may go so far as to not even check with state authorities before em embarking on these activities. But in fact, the state law um, states very clearly that uh, you must receive a permit uh, to affect the areas of this 25 foot setback. Avoid unnecessary confusion, uh, destruction of the very useful and needed setback area and the potential damage of private property and lands. Maintain decks, fences, landscape walls, retaining walls, planting and landscaping as conditional uses, subject to permission from the state. So to close, I encourage you not to recommend to the county commission the changes to the setback distance of the landward from the landward toe of the landward most dune, and do not recommend the changes to the permitted uses in the beach and dune protection district in the county code. Uh, right. now, Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. For the opportunity. You're welcome. Are any other like to come and speak against against in favor of this? I think is what it is. I don't think so. Okay. All right, commissioners. Commissioner Upson. Um. Yes. Can you? Uh, this is Bryce. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Um. It, uh, Commenting on uh, Commissioner Usry talking about decks, um, that verbiage obviously could could mean many things. Um, uh, maybe that should be changed to uh, to to any items horizontal that are flush with grade, like a a paver 
um, instead of uh, using the word deck, something that they would have to be at grade as opposed to um, a deck that could be potentially considered as something, you know, elevated above, uh, above grade. All right. Now, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to defer this until the, uh, until the November meeting. Uh, perhaps we could workshop this at the same time we workshop the height of the height ordinance revision. Uh, I, I, th I think there's some unanswered questions here, and I think I think we should take the long view of this particular ordinance and not necessarily just uh, just make a change because the DNR made a change. I, th I think there's some things here that could affect uh, as some of the things that Commissioner Findig is trying to accomplish, which is trying to trying to maintain uh, or trying to control density. Uh, I would hate to do something here or miss an opportunity. I guess is what I'm trying to say is to is to control a little bit of density and also to uh, understand some of the some of these uses that we have currently allowed in this to make sure that we're doing the right thing okay there's a motion to defer to the november 16th meeting is there a second Brooks, mr brooks seconded the motion any discussion All right, I'll call um, the I, I, uh, oh, i'm sorry i i I don't understand what this has to do with density in this in this uh, the the permitted uses. I think I, I think it's not necessarily the per, I don't think it's necessarily the permitted uses that are in fact it's the fact that that in the future using this formula we could gain developable land that we currently do not have because uh, because of the stable doom moving seaward. That's my. I, 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 I feel like that would be a separate conversation that this is this is applying to what's existing. Now, Mr. Uh, Chair, de develop it, developing Mr. Chair. Wait, wait a minute. Let, let Commissioner Brock finish, please. Oh, OK, I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't know who that was. Okay. Thank Commissioner you, Mr. Brock. You, you. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I guess I'm just confused uh, because the uh, accreting land and, and that being developed by, you know, specific original homeowners that, that may still be paying, you know, property tax on, on something that they lost many years ago um, that may or may not in the future have the potential to redevelop. I feel like that is a, a completely separate uh, situation and discussion uh, from the one that we have in front of us right now. All right, thank you. Commissioner Duncan? Uh, never mind, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion before uh, I call the vote? Yeah, listen, Commissioner Torres, I, I have to agree with uh, Commissioner Brock as well. Um, I think if someone's been paying taxes on accreted land and then they have the chance to, to, to develop it, that they should be given the right to develop it as well. All right. Any other? But wouldn't all of it, if, if we defer it and have a workshop on it and get all the pertinent information, wouldn't all of this come out at, during that time that's for a better saying. understanding? Yeah, that's, that's the goal. Yeah. Get a better understanding but of I, the ordinance. Right. But I, but I feel like we're talking about two separate things right now. I think I think we I think we've taken the accreted land and the potential use for that accreted land or development of that accreted land and lumped it in with you know standard practices that are aligned with uh, with the DNR and and that I, and I, I do not feel like this should be deferred. I feel like that these are two separate situations. All right, thank you. Any other discussion? Call the question, Mr. Chair. Yep. Yeah. All right. On the motion to defer to November 16th, Commissioner Brock? Uh, nay. All right. Commissioner DiPolito? Aye. Was that aye? Yes. Commissioner Duncan? Aye. Commissioner Rooks? Aye. Commissioner Torres? Nay. Commissioner Uthry? Aye. Commissioner Willis? Aye. 
vote is five for the motion, two against. All right, uh, I'll converse with the uh, staff about potential uh, work session dates. I, I think it would be appropriate, and Will, maybe you can help us out here, that we have this work session just for the IPC uh, on these two items because they really don't affect the mainland. I know the mainland, whatever comes up out of this, the mainland would have to approve. But is that allowable where we can just work by ourselves? Yes, sir. You can have a special call meeting of the IPC to have a work session to discuss these these two. Right. When is the restriction on in-person meetings with the county? When does that end? Do you have a date? Uh, the direction that um, we've gotten from our um, one of our co-county managers is that uh, for the remainder of this year, we are planning to keep public meetings virtual. So that that's the current direction, but you know, that could change. So we'd have to be a virtual meeting. Yes, sir. OK, that's the, all right. Well, I appreciate everybody's indulgence and in all this. This is not easy to do, and I appreciate your patience. And if there's no other business. Chairman, I, I would just like I, I just like to tell uh, Commissioner Fendi, we really appreciate all you're you're doing for St. Simons, and I, I know it's an uphill battle, and I know it's you don't get a lot of appreciation for it. We we do appreciate you putting forth the effort. Well, thank you. You're a great group to start this process with. <laughs> all right, thank you for coming, Commissioner Fendi, and thank everybody for thank pulling you. in on this. All right, we stand adjourned.